from a black base coat of Abaddon Black over Chaos Black Spray. Paint all the metal areas using Lead Belcher. Uh, the reason I overpainted with Abaddon Black before starting was to correct any mistakes on the black areas. all the red armor areas with corn red. Unfortunately this film footage didn't catch on the camera. Paint the sleeves and the trousers with Mechanicus Standard Grey. Base coat all the areas to be gold with Retributor armor. Base got all the areas to be blue with Stegadon scale green. So this is both all of the cabling and all of the lenses. Also paint the areas of the gun to be glowing with this color. Base coat the wood and the leather areas with Rhinox hide. This is mainly the scabbard, the straps in the backpack, the wooden areas of the gun. I also painted the weapon handle this colour at the same time. Um, this ended up being a different colour at the end, but it serves as a good base coat. Shade the recesses and the rivets on the red armour with Agrax Art Shade. For the larger panels, you could probably pick them out as individual uh, recesses, but on areas like the belly um, and actually on the leg, it ends up being almost an overcoat of this shade, um, which is tidied up in the next step, aiming to make sure all the deep, deepest recesses are shaded, um, but minimising the amount of cleanup by avoiding the flat surfaces. As mentioned, tidy up any overspill of the shade with corn red. Edge highlight the red armor with Evil Sun's Scarlet. For any of the sharper edges, this is easily achieved with the edge of the brush. But in some of the more recessed areas, this might require just patience and taking care with brush tip. 
In addition, pick out all the rivets with this color as well um, to make them stand out against the red armor. Pick out the sharpest edges then with a second highlight of Fire Dragon Bright. So the sharper edges of the armor plate and the rivets with this color. Um, less is more in this case, don't go too overboard or the armor will start veering towards looking orange. But the small amount of highlight will give the armor an extra pop. highlight the blue areas with Soltec Green. Um, when I say highlight, really in this case it's painting the majority of these but leaving the edges with a darker colour. So you can see here on the cable not going right up to the point at which it meets the backpack or the metal. And for the lenses it's covering most of the lens but trying to ensure that the outer edge of the lens remains the darker colour. Remember this time to also highlight the gun as well in the same colour. Highlight these areas again with Temple Guard Blue covering smaller areas. Um, again, what you're aiming to do with each successive layer is to cover smaller and smaller areas and allowing the paint to be thin enough for the transitions to seem smooth. Um, this is the final highlight colour for the cabling but their lenses will be highlighted further to set them apart. Highlight the more centre again of the lens with Baharoth blue. Um, this is an edge paint and is quite opaque, so thin it down more so than the previous paints to make sure that it blends with the colours underneath. Complete the brightest highlights with dots of blue horror. Again, an edge paint, so be careful with it. But as this is to be a dot highlight, I wouldn't necessarily dead it down too much. Just making sure there's a fine tip in the brush to get the very center of the lens.
highlight the sharpest folds on the cloth, I mean this model more so on the arm than on the pants, with administratum grey. paint over the flattest areas of the wood and leather, mostly the scabbard and the wood of the gun with Rhinox hide. Pick out the sharpest edge of the wood areas with steel age and drab. Um, on this gun there isn't a huge amount, so it's really only the one or two sharp edges. Just keep the layer thin as an edge highlight. Also this time edge highlight the leather scabbard in the same colour. To differentiate the materials I picked the edges of the straps on the backpack with scrag brown. I painted over the entire of the Col Mechanica symbols with a bad and black, just in case any overspill of previous paints had altered this colour. Um, and remember this bone both on the front and on the back of the backpack. Pick out the right side of the skulls and the left side of the cog behind in Corax white. Now white over black is a bit of a trick to cover and ideally you don't want to really clog any detail so thin coat to this paint, two or even three layers is probably a better way to do it than trying to cover it in one go. Shade the deepest recesses, which is really just the eye socket in dilute Mechanica standard grey on the white side of the skull. Highlight the sharpest areas in the back half of the skull, which is really the eye socket, with Mechanica Standard Grey as well at this time. Pick out the recessed part of the dial with Mephiston Red. Paint the remaining areas of the dial with Corax white, remembering to keep the paint thin and two or three layers to cover.
paint the arms and the centerpiece of the dial using iron hand steel. I picked a brighter steel in this case to try to make the effect more pronounced, but in the end, using lead belcher will end up with pretty much the same result. Shade the metal areas with null oil. Um, try your best not to have this over spill too far into the white, but actually having the null oil spill over the sides a little gives black lining and makes the arm stand out a bit more. And actually after this step I went back in with Corax white and painted over these areas. Highlight all of the silver areas with Stormhole Silver. Now there's a large amount of silver areas in this model. Some areas, like the sharpest edges, you can use the edge of the brush. Um, but there's a lot of areas, such as around the hand, where you basically just have to paint it as fine line painting. Um, take your time with this step. And again, less is more. You don't need a huge amount of this on the sharpest edges to make the effect pronounced. For the areas of cabling, if you take off most of the paint onto a dry paper towel, you can basically use the soft side of the brush to run over these surfaces and just to pick out the raised areas akin to dry brushing. Highlight the gold areas with Liberator Gold in much the same fashion as with the Stormhole Silver. out the sharpest areas on the cloak using eschen grey. Most of these areas can be done using the side of the brush and um, there are some areas in this model in particular around the right wrist and right arm to pick out along the length of it where the sharpened edges but a lot of the cloak is quite smooth on this model and um, because it's a black cloak I'm happy enough to just highlight the edges and leave the rest as is. Highlight the fingers of the gloved hand with Eschen Grey at this point as well. Pick out the raised areas of the handle using Doombull Brown. Um, these diamonds are quite shallow detail, so there is another way really of, of picking them out than paint them individually. It takes time, but well worth the effort. A 
second finer highlight of the corners of the cloak was added using a midistratum grey. Um, this effect can be limited to really the only the sharpest of corners, but as a second colour highlight it makes the edges of the cloak just pop a little bit more. Paint the rock on which the marshal is standing with Dawnstone. Pick out the raised areas on the handle of the sword using Mechanica Standard Grey. You can base the model whichever way suits your army, but in this case I went with the Nash base by starting with a layer of astrogranite technical paint over all of the base and trying to avoid the cloak, but if it overspills onto the rock, that's fine because it'll add to the effect that one is part of the other. Shade both the base and the rock with basilicanum grey contrast. Dry brush the base and the rock with administratum grey. Lightly dry brush the sharpest edges of the rock and the most prominent areas of the base with Ultuan grey. Paint the rim of the base with a bad and black to finish. And this is the finished result. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe for more Warhammer 40,000 and other miniature painting content.